Hello and welcome, I'm Impact Frames and welcome to another video. In this video is super special because I'm unveiling if Maker GPTQ. I have my if Maker extension for stable diffusion and now I have a special model that produces prompts, like even better prompts than the normal characters do because this thing was made in a dataset of 80k alpaca template that I made especially with my characters and then use different scripts to make uh, things to get, for example, all the artists that are training Stable Diffusion 1.5 and it also has like different aesthetics, better control for the camera lenses and yeah, the wording of the things is improving a lot because it has been trained like with prompts that are taking into account different cultures, traditions, like things that are important in the art world. Like for example, there are many prompts about photo shoots for commercials, for architecture, for history, things like characters for novels and, and stuff like that. So it's gonna be super cool to use even. Yeah, I think it's gonna be like an improvement and super, super hype about it. And, Hopefully you will find that useful. This was trained on top of Llama 2. So it's the latest, greatest, and it's super good. So you can get it here just by copying this and going into your text generation web UI. You have the model tab and you just paste this here and download it. I won't do it now because I already, of course, have it in my computer. And then you just load it with X Llama Hugging Face or X Llama and just use 1496 here and 2 here. And all the rest is taken care of by the extension. And you have the extension that you can get it here from my GitHub or you can use XDNX to get it from the extensions. If you already have it, you just have to update. If you don't, just look for if Pro Maker and it will be there. Restart your UI. And then you will find it here in the scripts. You will be if pro maker, you just click on that and it will appear. Before you do anything, let's set Uba Booga character folder, which will be in here. Let me see. Let's go. So you go into Uba Booga and you have this character folder, right? You have to put your characters that you get when you download the extension, you will have in a stable diffusion, in extensions, you will have this folder called if pro maker, and then you will have these characters, right? You just copy all of them. Even if you have already copied these characters, do it again because I update some of them, especially this one, if pro maker, please copy that one, copy it and paste it inside that Ubabuga folder. These are the characters that live in Ubabuga. What happened like if I update my extension in a stable diffusion, the characters here in Ubabuga don't get updated because they are outside the stable diffusion, so they will never know. So you have to do this step manually, load the characters here, and that's all the only thing that you actually have to do. Apart from that, you maybe can select here in the settings apart this is the character folder that i was just talking about and in the settings you if you have two computers one computer in the network somewhere you can put the address the ip address here and as long as you can access that computer from yours it should load it here your uba Booga. so let's go back in from text or this thing working from image and from text so depending where you are using it from, it will work anyway. And it works with 1.5 and XDXL. I have another video explaining XDXL. Actually, I have a video explaining how to make a LoRa in XDXL that is really good. And I'm gonna make the best video in, XD, in making XDXL that you're gonna ever see. Soon, really soon. Okay, so you're just gonna go here in characters and going to if pro maker select this character this is the one that works the best with the mold that we just downloaded in ubabuga and in here you have the pro mode you have the default pro mode if you tick this one it will produce one image it will produce all the images that you put in your batch count and batch size for example if i put three and three that, that will be nine images 
but for all the nine images you only have one prompt because the default mode only makes one prompt for all the images and then the difference in the image is the seed. If you have a different seed, random seed, you will have a different image per prompt, right? If you go per image, basically the nine images will have all a different prompt that it will vary in some of the words because the LLM will make a different thing every time, but it won't be too different. It will still stick to the subject that you select, but it will make something different and the image will be different. And then per batch, basically will make three, three prompts for nine images. Then you have this input prompt, and this is the only thing that is required for using uh, this prompt maker. And in here you put your subject and it has to be something small that you, for example, a beautiful flower or something else. Let's see if we can find like a good prompt for this. And maybe we gonna select like Chevrolet um, C10 Rider. My dad used to have one of those because he's a hard worker and yeah, he used to have one of those and he learned to drive in that it's super cool machine. I love that car. And yeah, that's it. Chevrolet C10 Low Rider. And we can go here. Let's put this in full screen. Then we have the prefix. If you put prefix here, you can put something that this will get added when the prompts come back from Ubabuga from the LLM. This will be added at the front and it's super good for putting the embeddings. If you are using 1.5, one of the things is like the things that are at the beginning of the prompt has more importance. And this thing will be right at the front of the prompt. And in here you can put something like a masterpiece or something. You can write anything here. And if you select some embedding from here, it will select straight away the, uh, the trigger word for you. So if you put urban jungle from here, it will select the trigger word. I will put it straight for you. And you keep adding more. You put a comma and put another, uh, another word. Uh, select another embedding and as long as you can put them then of course the embeddings are something that you have to use like sparingly like the loras the same so i don't recommend to use more than one or two but you can use as many as you like you are the artist here and you get all the triggered words with this button if this thing first scan all your molds in your folders and it will put them here in the in the list for you. And the next thing that you need to do is come in get all triggers. So if you hit, hit get all triggers, there is a message here saying that this can take a long time depending on how many modes you have in your computer. So you just have to be patient, wait a little bit, and then after a while you will have all your trigger words and you only need to do this one time and it will have all your trigger words for your models that have a, um, a trigger word right here. This is the suffix and it's the same idea like the prefix. These things will get added at the end of the, of the prompt. And in here you can put something less important or a LoRa with some weight because the LoRa's have the weights. You can see here, you can put 0.8, even 1.2, whatever the strength. I think the Lora's strength go from minus two to two, similar to the weights. In here, actually, I forgot to say, but you can actually weight the prompts and it will respect the weighting. And another thing, if you notice here, I have two things that are here straight away every time that you add. And this is to save you time because I think these are a must have to have in any prompt, add detail and dark theme. But if you get bored of them, then you can delete them and that's it. It's better than coming here and look for add detail every time, right? So, so that's the idea. The same with the negative prompt. You can make one by yourself, uh, bad hands or whatever. But you can come here and select one from the templates that I made and you can even go into your folder in Stable Diffusion and in Stable Diffusion if Prom Maker extensions and then you go if Prom Maker 
and you have the negative files. You can come here and create a new text uh, file with your negative prompt. And then you have your own template, your own custom negative prompt for each time. And the same with the excluded words. There is one folder called excluded that have this file in here. You can put words separated by comma and I made this so if you are serving this to customers or maybe you are serving this in your house, your home computer for your kids, you don't want them to see naked things so you put like naked a list of things that you don't want people to see or reproducing a stable diffusion. So you take care of your parental things. And yeah, you can close this. And the rest of the things is remove weights and remove artists. Because I was telling you that my model can make the, all the artists from a stable diffusion. Every prompt will have like a pre-made pre artist that is in there. Sometimes it will be a specific to, it will be very coherent sometimes and sometimes it will not be. It's the nature of the beast. If you have a 70 billion parameter model, you can do it, but right now the the reality is like the, these type of computers don't support and uh, these huge models but this thing will come in the future when so basically uh, you can select this if you want for example remove weights is for a stable diffusion excel because a stable diffusion excel doesn't take into account weights so it doesn't know parentheses and that kind of thing you, you have to use this to remove the weights from the mold and the, the prompt will be perfect for it. So let's say like I put here a colon 1.5 and, and if prompt maker will try to make exactly what I put here. So it will try to give 1.5 weight to this, but the this thing will remove it. And this is because I'm using XDXL here. When you're using L, XDXL support more resolution like 10, 1024. Okay, 1024 by 1024. And then I have, uh, again, SDX Keras and 28. And let's say that I want to generate a prompt per image. And I'm gonna put just two and two here and generate. And this thing is sending the tokens. It, it tells you that it's connecting here and you have the tokens that it took. Here you have also like the computer that you are connected with because I'm in my main computer, both softwares are working at the same time. And it says that it's gonna make four images and it has like a timeline here to make them. Okay guys, something is weird here with the automatic SDNX because it's not working with the SDSL anymore. Maybe I check the um, git pool so I get like an update for automatic and something is not working all of the sudden. But for the old checkpoints like the 1.5, it came up really well. So the Pro Maker is working, it's doing its job. So I'm gonna do is going to automatic 11.11. .11. And I'm gonna show you SDSL in there, and that also will give us an opportunity to see this in automatic 1111. So let's go. Okay, awesome. So we are here back in Ubabuga, and we are gonna set up the team for SDXL 1024 by 512. I'm using DPM to MSDE, and I'm gonna pump this to 30 steps. And there is a refiner here, but I don't think I'm gonna use this thing. Maybe, perhaps. Maybe I should put this in, yeah. Something like this. And let's go and load if pro maker. And as you can see, it's the same UI, the same thing. If you are in stable diffusion, just go to extensions. The thing is in here. You can get your available things load from all or yeah. 
let's go back in the text to image and in here let's put instead of the dark elf uh, princess let's put chevrolet c10 low rider and we're gonna remove weights there is no weights here but anyway i'm gonna put this but actually i just gonna put it to for the lols for the lols let's go and yeah, I learned to drive on this thing when I was like 12, more or less. Yeah, 12, 14. So I'm gonna put photo shoot, maybe trying to get an image more like a picture, like a photograph. And I'm gonna use if from Micro. And again, like I was saying, you can select things like here when the base start to work in XDSL, we can use it like that and load us the same. Amazing, so we have negative prompts, everything. Let's go, let's go. And we have, let's do two, no, let's do two images. Yeah, because I don't want to be spending more time here. I want to go do something else. Go so generate. And if we go back into Ubabuga in the thing, yeah, is the thing the request is coming here and stable diffusion is sending the request loads of um, scripts are having trouble with something new with gradio gradio the precation okay guys sorry i had to pause the video because it's, the thing was like eating my ram with the recording and everything i don't have a enough RAM to use SDXL in my machine together with Ubabuga and the recording so I had to post that but as you can see my, my script is working really well in here it's doing the thing the, the LLM is making its job so yeah that's the C10 SDXL is amazing but it's also a bit like difficult with the older computers so this is like more for I think I like to use my ProMaker in 1.5 for, for now until I have more power. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Please go and if, if you find this helpful, please go into the Hogging Face repo, give it a like. On my GitHub repo, please uh, give it a like. And if you can support me, please go ahead and I will be making more things. This is going all back to the YouTube channel and I'm going to try to make more things and better things. Thank you for watching and bye bye.